I call Chris Hopkins. Thank you, Mr Chairman. We need a different approach to the way we deal with education in New Zealand, an approach that is not about narrowing the focus of our education system, but one that is about widening the scope of our education system, one that it rejects the standardised, homogenised version that the national government have of childhood and of children to one that recognises diversity and individuality and that kids develop different things at different rates and they've got different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the standardised approach in New Zealand has failed. It has failed spectacularly, and we know that because the one uh, peer-reviewed overseas study that, we've, that we focus on, PISA, and I think we focus on PISA far too much, spectacularly demonstrates our tumble down. We get worse in every study. So let's look at the numbers in the PISA study that the Select Committee was presented with. In 2006, before the National Government, we were fifth in the world for reading, and we are now 10th. And we were 11th in the world for maths, and we are now 21st. Uh, and we were 7th in the world for science, and we are now 12th. But what is more concerning is it's not just the rankings that have gotten worse in all of these. The average test scores of New Zealand students have declined in every PISA study since the National Party became government. So it's not just that other countries are getting better. We are actually getting worse. <laughs> And as I've said, I think we focus too much on PISA, but it is the one comparator, the one benchmarking study that we can look to to see how we're doing, and the results are not good. And I think that that's concerning. It's also concerning uh, that the government crow on about NCEA and the increased achievement in NCEA, when I think that is one of the greatest acts of deception and, dare I say it, fraud of any government when it comes to talking about student achievement and education. Because the government do not care how students achieve their NCEA. They do not care if the credits that they have accumulated to get their NCEA qualification lead them to nowhere, as long as they get a level two qualification so that the government can say, tick, we hit our target. If NCEA uh, achievement is so much better under this national government, why are fewer students getting university entrance? And why are more students ending up on the dole or doing nothing, on a neat, not in education, employment or training? Those numbers are going up. The number of students getting university entrance are going down, despite the fact that NCEA achievement is improving. We know that there is a massive socio-economic disparity in the way that NCEA achievement is made up. Students in poorer communities, Māori and Pacifica students, are more likely to be directed through pathways of learning for their NCEA that lead them into low-wage, low-value jobs. That's the stunning reality of this. And we should be taking that seriously. Simply saying that qualification achievement rates are going up and that that's all there is to it, it's not enough. It is an act of deception. These kids are not being equipped for the world beyond school, and that is something that the government needs to focus a lot more attention on. It is simply not fair what the government are doing to those kids, uh, and I think that that's not good enough. School operational funding has been frozen under this national government. The result is 13,000 schools around the country get less money this year than they got last year because of the National Party's funding freeze. We have a teacher supply crisis in this country because the National Party haven't been dealing with, teachers, with uh, teaching issues. We've got a support staff problem because the support staff aren't being paid what they are worth, they aren't being looked after, and as a result, we simply don't have enough people working with kids to meet their learning needs, and parents are paying more and more for their kids' education, even though it is supposed to be free, because the government simply aren't stumping up with the cash. In early childhood education, the picture is equally grim. The national government and the current minister's predecessor, Hekia Parata, have boasted about the fact that they have cut $523 million out of early childhood education by reducing the funding rates. It was one of the first decisions they made when they become government, and it has resulted in a $523 million cut from early childhood education, despite the fact that all of the research tells us that the more money we put into ECE, the better the outcomes in ECE, the better kids do all the way through the rest of the system and later on in life. 
The first thing the national government did was cut funding for that. They have abandoned their commitments to improve the ratios um, of teachers to, to children for the under twos. Remember that? That was their headline commitment in 2008, and they have done nothing towards it. They have cut quality by cutting the number of registered qualified teachers in early childhood education. It's a sad state of affairs. It's one that the government needs to do a lot more about. I don't think there's much hope of it happening under the National Party. Uh, I call... Um uh, Catherine Delahunty.